the series, it is going to be the uh, Towers of Doom of Outer Sea in the game. Hooray! Speaking of Outer Sea in the game, Braxis was banned. Hey, that's actually really cool. Like, that is our first Towers of Doom game of the day. And uh, I think Bakery put it uh, on Twitter the other day saying that, man, Towers of Doom games are so great for HCC. Not just from a caster's point of view, but also from a viewer's point of view. And I think the players are enjoying themselves as well because you can always make those comebacks happen. Even if there's only one HP left on Ikori, you can still potentially make it. And uh, that's what makes this Battleground very unique and very popular. Indeed. Also, just really cool voice acting. I love the combination of the two map announcers arguing with yes. each other. I want more of it. That's so, so good. It is so good. Which one would you? Which one do you prefer? I the like the Gravekeeper or the Raven Lord. No, I like the Raven Lord a little bit more. He always reminds me of that uh, uh, zombie slash undead voice in Michael Jackson's Thriller. You know, when, he, when he's oh, doing the, the narrating? Oh, uh, the darkness falls across the Exactly. Land. That's what the Raven Lord I know that off by like. heart. <laughs> Just because it's such a cool voice. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, that's why I'm, I'm a little bit more... Do... Like, I'm, I'm Team Raven Lord, let's put it this way. I do prefer the Gravekeeper because I think he has some better voice lines. Okay. Uh, just, just the standard. Our towers assail the Raven Lord, <laughs> and uh, of course the heroes. I have opened a tunnel leading to the battleground center. What? I, I knew I could do that. I'm opening my tunnel as well. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you've been really learning those. Those were on point. I listen to them. They're cool. If, if they're, <laughs> if they're not going to give us uh, Heroes of the Storm caster packs or caster voice packs anytime soon, they better hire you as a new map announcer, dude. You Well, I've already told you that I'm moving my way as a second job into voice acting. Hmm. I'm doing, doing my best with it. I'm currently speaking to an agent in the next couple of weeks, actually. So really? that's going to be interesting. That's amazing. Yeah. Man, you got to keep us updated on how it goes. I, I plan on maybe making vlogs about it, see what I could do with it. So how did journey. you uh, how did you get in touch with that agent in the first place? Sorry, by the way, for the <laughs> excursion, guys, but I'm just that genuinely is. interested in that. Uh, my mom does sailing, and she was sailing, and <laughs> they were talking about family, and they asked what her son did, and she said what I did. And this person was, and I was planning on getting coaching, and this person was like, "Don't get coaching. My wife's an agent. Give her a, give her a CV." <laughs> <laughs> so, literally pure luck. So, oh, I'm, I'm man, probably still going to get though. some coaching. That's so cool. All right. <laughs> now we've got that settled, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to yes, focus back draft. on the draft. We see Brightwing coming in here. And whenever you see Hots Lady and KT, like both of those teams prioritize Brightwing very highly, especially Hots Lady. So, I think it was not only a uh, pick because KT wanted the Brightwing, but because they also wanted to steal it away. Because both, again, and. 365, like both of those people, both of those uh, players are fantastic Bright Wings. Yes, they are, but the issue is that Bright Wing isn't as good for healing, uh, out healing that damage from Lunara. And with two slows already on the board, uh, excluding Lunara's own slows in the form of Tass and Tyrael, here come all the lags. I'm having a refresh. Yeah, same here. Um, but yeah, lots of, sl lots of slows is going to really raise Lunara's damage output. They need a second healer. They really do. Like, against the Lunara, if you only rely on Brightwing, true, she's a good sustained AoE healer, but she's not the best of the best. Like, I actually think that Six, here's like Malfurion might be a little bit better, but if you get a... Seven. Yeah, seven, uh, seven as well. But if you get someone like Tassar next to her, who's actually still uh, not open because it was taken away by Hustle, but even... Like, what, what is going on, Tisha? Why no Tyrande? Why, why I, don't we see her at all? This is, this is China. Flail. I don't know. It's weird. Also, no Kelth is out all day. Sad. But either way, double support. No Garrosh. I mean, I can no. understand the Garrosh because he's a scumbaggy horde character that nobody likes to play in 2017. Shut you. He has a higher pick rate and win rate this season than Varian. Uh, as we Fake see. news right there. I want, <laughs> I want proof and sources right in there. In China. Okay. In China. Okay. Okay. This is what we're on about. <laughs> so, yeah, we have Uther and Leoric coming in. So, they have... Uh, they only have room for a tank as their last pick, really. Leoric can solo tank, but it's really a bad idea, mm. even with his new reworks. So, we will see what they run with as their last pick. Hot's Lady, more slows, and Arthas as a second tank would be reasonable for them, but they also need a healer. What supports come with slows? Rhaegar's still available. Illidan oh, Rhaegar makes a lot Rhaegar. of sense, man. 
those two have been best buddies ever since the alpha stage when um, there was a so-called Bloodlust comp with Illidan. I mean, you could even see it now these days, but uh, Bloodlust didn't really get the best results going. And this is already very scary for KT, right? It's almost the perfect Illidan comp with only Abathur missing out of the picture. But Tassadar, Rengar, Illidan, plus Tyrael providing additional movement speed and protection as well. I'm a little bit worried about KT. What about you? I'm a little bit worried as well, but an interesting reaction coming in, though, is the Diablo. It's yeah. not a hero that we see too often in general, but it's single target CC, point and click, or an Illidan, which is kind of what they needed. So I don't hate it, but it's just the whole state's comp is so good. It's, it's that situation of, yeah, I like the Diablo, but you're still boned. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is still so strong as you. Everything's so synergetic so, from the stuff of I think, hot uh, I think Diablo has a major advantage going on in his favor on battle. Uh, excuse me, on Towers of Doom, right? Towers of Doom is a map that is usually a little bit more narrow and more tight than other maps in yeah, terms of how of much balls. space you have available, right? So maybe at level 13 with a devastating charge quest talent, you can actually stack it up very nicely. And if you then get overpower. Uh, domination at 16, you can really just go for those crazy one-shot combos, and maybe that's going to be their battle plan. But as you as you said, I'm not sure if it's the perfect choice against the Illidan comp that Hot Lady feels. We'll see, I guess, and we'll see indeed as we're loading into map number one between Hot Lady and KT. The bottom of the table, they're fighting for their league survival. Let's go. Golden classic Illidan composition here on the side of Hot's Lady in the blues with 365 on the TAS. Again, plays Regar, Feet B on the Lunara Kid, going for that Illidan and Carlo, last but not least, one of his comfort picks on the Tyrael. Whereas on the right, it is going to be Kudos Top with T Die on the Bright Wing, Neptune on the Leoric, Genshuo on Uther, Sea Ink playing that Valor, and Butcher bringing out the Diablo. He's getting a little bit closer to actually playing Butcher. He's in the right game, but it's still no Butcher. <laughs> exactly. So Butcher is going to play that juicy big Diablo. And except for Lunara. I don't think there's a lot of tank shredding available with percentage damage. Of course, Lunara could go for that giant killer at 13, but that comes yeah. in relatively late. So, up until this point, Diablo should be relatively safe, shouldn't he? Illidan can get a giant killer style talent, True. right? I can't remember what it's called. Um, seething hatred, burning hatred, I don't know, there's too much hatred. Uh, he's a very hateful guy, I agree. But I he think is. it is the uh, Fiery Brand. At level 16. Fire Brand sounds right. Yeah, every Fiery fourth attack against Brand. the same hero yeah. deals an additional 6% of their maximum health. But he needs to get four consecutive neat. attacks against the same target. Against a Diablo, that shouldn't really be that hard. So it remains to be seen yeah. whether Illidan goes that route. Because normally, Mark for Death is really good. And sometimes, occasionally, Blades of Azanoth really good, too. Indeed. That shouldn't be too difficult or too bad for him in general. Uh, for now, though, both uh, I have lagged up to eight seconds. By the way, I don't know if that's if I need a refresh for that. Uh, I think I'm sitting at a solid seven, so I think we're we'll good leave for that now. There, then that works cool. out. As we do see, C Ink taking uh, what we call a lot of poison damage because Lunara's kind of great, especially in the early game. Like level, I would argue that Lunara's power spikes are one seven and twenty. Mm-hmm. What about the unfair like advantage if you have a lot of slows in your team? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 1, 7, 13, 20. 20, well, just past 20. Any level past 20, because the longer the game goes on, well. the more your poison stacks up. Uh, she is, however, dead. Uh, <laughs> so... Power level gonna... is going to have to wait a little bit longer to be reached. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, what also, we could also see... Seven. Cool, yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> what we can see here in that top lane, by the way, Illidan already drained all the ammo out of those towers, which allows him to dive extremely deep into that back line on the bright wing. So he's going to have to be very careful. Actually, you can see on the minimap how Illidan's icon moves from left to right and right to left, because he can basically do whatever he wants. He actually destroyed both towers already. Kid is on a rampage in that top lane. Yeah, we just mentioned Lunara's power levels, Illidan's power levels, the 
in comparison are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, etc. As we do see them trying to put pressure onto t die here, Neptune is having to Wraith Walk away. Yeah. Valor, though, coming in, preventing that steal, but taking so much damage. Already reforced to retreat. Diablo comes in, super aggressive. Feed B in zone, tower shot. Seeing wanted to finish him off, but died himself. Kid nearly dies to a tower shot. There's so many low heroes, but it's so good by Kelt's Lady. They pick up three kills and will steal those shots. Well, and uh, up to this point, it looks like Odin is not just his own scars, but he's also the scar of KT because they can't even handle him in the early stages of the game. How are things going to get better when there are more defensive tools available from Tassadar, or from the Rhaegar, and of course, Illidan himself? Like, right now, they're just lacking the tools to really keep him in check, and this could be a, a real problem for KT. KT right now on the back foot already. They're only one set of shots behind. They were able to grab the ones in bot lane very sneakily. The re five is fleeing, but he is able to get out. It was the dimensional shift got him out of range, so Leoric didn't, uh, wasn't able to spectral swing again. So, uh, skeletal swing, sorry. So wasn't able to slow him down anymore for Diablo to catch up. Yeah, exactly. Now, Illidan, of course, now that I see it, like, the more I see Illidan being played by Kate here, by the way, who's doing a fantastic job at that, uh, the more mm -hmm. I feel that he brings so much to the table as a hero. He's a decent solo laner, actually wrecking that top lane, he's great at killing mercenary camps, which on Towers of Doom is very important, and he's so good at team fighting with those double support comps behind him. So, the more I see Illidan here deployed, and the more I see KT's roster failing to pick those great counters, at least for now, uh, the more I dig it. However, let's speak of Illidan counters here just real quick. Diablo, in theory, as long as he knocks him against the wall and keeps him CC'd, he's yeah. actually not that bad. Neither is Uther. He could go for the Divine Storm. And Bribing, of course, Emerald Wind plus uh, Polymorph. Good times. Yeah, we don't have the unstable polymorph, so it's just a regular polymorph. Cleanse. Bribing coming in with that teleport shield, but it's not enough! So oh, much poison! No. Down goes the Valor, down goes the Uther. Brightwing is fleeing. Elizabeth decides he has gone too deep and backs up. Shots are going to be taken by Hot's Lady here as they pick up another two kills. They're looking for more, actually. Oh my god. I think they can't afford to do so. The minions are going to intercept the tower's aggro and the fort's aggro, but they're not as relentless. They focus on taking the... Uh, Alter for now, which makes a lot of sense. Um, at level 7, we see an interesting variation. By the way, we see the diabolical momentum coming in from Diablo. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Like, normally you're used to seeing the soul shield if the enemy team has a lot of ability damage, or you see the health region increase from your black soul stones. But the diabolical momentum makes a lot of sense here, in my opinion, because it allows Diablo to have his crowd control abilities up more often. And against Illidan, I think that's going to be his top priority. It's not about, you know, negating the Lunara damage. It's not about um, having greater sustain. It's more about keeping that freaking Illidan in check, because otherwise he's going to continue uh, wreak havoc in the backline. Now, speaking of wreaking havoc in the backline, Ooh. Brightwing coming in here with a nice face shift, and the mercenary cap was stolen successful, Tensure. Now, there's one thing Diablo is good at. It's really quick ganks. If you're especially onto camps. Camp steals, I would argue, possibly his best feature, because you're always going to hit them into a wall if you're coming exactly. in for a camp steal. It's just almost guaranteed success rate as long as your team is there as the backup and they were feet b takes lots of damage kt big force to retreat though they're out of minions no and tens, task yeah. drops the archon just for the defense here so much damage is dropped not run Terial, <laughs> Terial wants to make this into a play looking for genshiro good stun gives oh. maybe maybe speed boost might be required here cleanse is used on sync everyone gets out <laughs> Look how Kid is just out dancing the Leoric, <laughs> jumping away. He can't even auto attack him. The Drain Hope was good, but that alone was not enough to really threaten him. Uh, yeah. Ironically, that did. That was unnecessary. Tetra, that was. Today, I guess he saw Diablo. Today is just the day of wasted heroic abilities, just to just for good showing. Yeah. Like maybe I he was mean, afraid I mean, of a he game. He might have but... seen Diablo. He may have seen yeah. Diablo rotating up to top, and that that was close. So <laughs> still, yeah. I don't know, man. That was literally in dive range. That the hunt, I mean. <laughs> oh. It was a little weird. Also, uh, I noticed something that when you kill a when you kill a bell tower, it actually kills the tower as well. Uh, the wall, sorry, as well. Here comes the apocalypse. Hits no one. As Butcher gets turned on, sanctification Emerald is dropped. Wind. And Butcher is surviving for the moment. And Illidan gets turned on. Back and the show. And it's re-engaged. Neptune shall fall here. Genshiro down two. That's two. Maybe three. Looking for Butcher. He makes it. 
into the keep range, though. Kid might have gone too deep, too greedy and too deep. No, not enough to finish him off. All right, not enough to make Illidan fall, but uh, that was clutch. The effort or the way they tried to do it was actually quite admirable. I think the Uther Divine Storm was on point, but so was the cleanse by Rhaegar. I think Rhaegar in general is basically the one person that keeps Kit in the game. Like That was the second cleanse that won them a team fight. The first one was uh, a few minutes ago when he dispelled the Polymorph, otherwise Illidan could have fallen. Oh, speaking of Illidan and falling, he gets knocked down and chained CC to death. What a great ambush by KT. Uh, rip. Honestly, that was <laughs> he didn't have a huge amount of ch chance there. He just found himself out of position. Exactly. Exactly. So KT, you know, they're showing moments of brilliance here. They are showing signs of life. They're not happy with the way this game has gone so far, and they want to turn it around. And they now, as you can see in the last team fight, they have all the tools available. They have the likes of Emerald Wind, the Divine Storm, which is, by the way, the perfect choice by Gentry, in my opinion. Holy shocking, that bell tower to the ground, paving the way for those mercenaries. I like it. I love that holy shock can work on structures. It's so it's good. so cool. <laughs> Take that, piece of rock. I'm going to electrocute you with religion. As 365 pulls back <laughs> behind his base, dropping shields. The rest of his team is going to deal with that bell tower second it's born. Yeah, I just had a mini lag here, so I'm just going to quickly um, double check on dude, my uh, latency. On eight. Yeah, I'm sitting at 8 as well, so I think it just that bounced out. Okay, cool. That will do. Cool. So, we do see Hot Lady rotating around, waiting for their opportunity to see if they can at least get their own. They, it doesn't look like they want to raid. Carlo's just scouting, making sure that they, you know, don't explode. And Carlo, what can you do, my friend? That was a mini Eldruins. Way too short to get anything done here. Now, uh, KT, they were happy with just splitting the uh, Ultras one-to-one. -one. They did get significantly less value out of it because Toppling was still in possession of Hot Slady, but with them being a talent down, there was really no time to waste. But uh, Brightwin capturing this one back, giving themselves a nice chunk of XP. Brightwin can, of course, join as well. And when she does, thanks to the new talent build that we're seeing a couple of times here, with that improved shield at 7, shielding herself and the target now, she's actually going to make a pretty big statement there. Nice move by Kid. Moving in and then immediately dashing to a location where the second Diablo tackled him, he wouldn't hit a wall. Yep. I really do like little moves like that that can... Uh, be the difference between engaging and getting yourself caught out of position and engaging for harassment. And Tetra, really I want to nice see uh, I want to see the impact of the devastating charge at level 13. This is really where Butcher can stack those uh, those wall body checks up and really blow people off their socks within a split second. And then of course followed up by the Divine Storm, the Polymorph, and there's very little that uh, the enemy team can do to save that target. What I would actually love to see is if they split their efforts or their attention a little bit more. For example, Diablo goes for the lockdown, Brightman goes for the Polymorph and Rhaegar, so they can't even be a cleanse, they can't even be an Ancestral, and when the Polymorph ends, it's already going to be too late. So keep an eye out for those split CC chains. It's going to be hard to execute, but if they do, I think they really have a good shot in those future team fights. We'll have to see. Is Illidan going to continue to push the top lane? Just see, he doesn't have emulation or anything, he just wants XP, he has to hunt, he's okay to do this. And not a good tackle onto 365, he's able Ooh, to survive seeing. pretty easily. Takes some good damage, but he's alive, so that's all good. Exactly. Just for good showing, you know, just uh, seeing, Ooh, just wanted to problems. make a stamp it. Oh, another stun against the wall, beautiful. Tassar, thanks for the range, is safe. <gasps> More walls, Ooh. and divine storm, <laughs> and wow, that's, that's just an easy kill. They were able to take bot lane though, which is good, so... Now it is a fight over their own objective yeah. with a member down. That was beautiful. I totally forgot about the potential yeah, synergy not. between the Entube and Diablo. So now you can actually see what they're trying to go for. After level 16 and Domination being there for Diablo, in an Entube they can actually BAM slam against the wall and BAM slam it against the other end of the wall and kill that sucker, whoever it is. Like, even Tyrael isn't safe if you can't use the Sanctification in time, so... Going for a, I think Roll20 actually played that style a lot at the mid-season Brawl in Western Clash as well, with Justin being a deadly Diablo. Yeah, I would, that's an excellent point there. I hope we see that again, actually. I want to see the return of that, even though it's like not their go-to, it's not uh, the only comp again anymore. Uh, the Roll20 Medivh Diablo comp is scary. I hope yeah. we see that again at BlitzCon. So, 
Let's see it for now, though, as Diablo gets a tackle onto Tyrael. Not able to get a huge amount out of it, and Tyrael just drops a sword for good measure. Holy ground, Huns! That's unnecessary, but it's put a lot of pressure on Seeing and does force him to back up. And Tomb is down. Leoric takes huge poison damage. And then Refuses maybe to die. again. Apocalypse, he gets stunned out, and Emerald win. But the Ancestral is good as the chase continues, trying to take it down. They take down Diablo, looking for more. Genshiro slowed by the Totem, the Earth Grass Totem at level 60 is able to slow him down enough for Illidan to pick up the kill. Diablo's already charging it up, though. The the, the Black Soul Stones caused him to respawn relatively quickly, but it looks like it is going to be too late. 16 is not there just yet. The bottom bell turret can't be saved anymore, and as such, these mercenaries are now going to march straight towards the death zone. So, uh, KT, they're going to have to raise their def defenses, but are they even trying? What are they? What? Are they going boss now, or...? I don't know. I, th their posture... They are. Oh my god. Is it they're actually going go to be game boss. over though, Tetra? Like, if those mercenaries go through and plus two Beltars, that's... Uh, that's five shots. Five, five. Is three. They'll be on one health. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Maps. god. Cast of maps. Okay, so four shots. No, I one, think you're right. I two, think they're sitting at one HP. Three, yeah, and here comes the five. Another five. They're on one core health, Kendrick. What have they done? <laughs> Why would you do this to yourself? I mean, the boss is cool. It's XP at this point, which I think is the idea. They didn't want to take the risk of fighting okay. a member down. Here's what's going to happen, is to Stop these sappers going in. Here's what's going to happen. Holy ground and sanctification, and all the uh, zappers are going to just march through. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe, yeah. Sags up. That's actually... That's actually really likely. I'm laughing, but that's a really that's a All right, really keep large an eye out for Carlo. Tyrael is gonna okay. make those big KT. plays, paving the way. In tomb, in tombs in the way. They can't do it. Apocalypse is down. Tyrael's nearly dead. Sag is down, but the sappers are too distracted. Here's the divine storm. It's a huge team fight at the death zone. The sappers killed the material. <laughs> They're moving in. The Tyrael explosion is good. Oh, no one's the sappers one goes in. That's all they need. And hot lady, take game number one. Will be a single sapper. That's all it took. The Kobe fadeaway pumpkin to the core. We have <laughs> our decision for game number one, Tetcher. A beautiful play by Hot's Lady, but also a very questionable choice by KT to give up 15 shots. Uh, actually, it was 13 shots and bring themselves down to <laughs> one core HP. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Towers of Doom, and as always, it was a blast. That was indeed a blast. We do love this map. It's my and favorite yeah, by far. Well played by Hot's Lady, taking game at number one. Reminder, they are two <laughs> points behind KT. In order for Hot's Lady to move themselves into a much safer position, they need a 2-0 day. They finally need to remain consistent, guys. That's the biggest crux about Hot's Lady. If they win a game, they look like one of the strongest teams in the league. I'm not even going to lie. I think they, they could easily, like, if they perform like they did right now in that game, I think they could easily challenge teams like, let's say, BTG, The One, or Soa. But, and here comes the big but, if they do not win, they look terrible. They look truly like the weakest team in the league. So hopefully they do not break in. Hopefully they will maintain the momentum, and hopefully they can win it too. Because they really need to if they want to stay in the league. Once again, it's all about... It's all about survival here for those two teams. It's not about making it to BlizzCon, it's about staying in the league 